Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC. I'm Ken, and this past weekend we were at the Mile High Mini Z Grand Prix at 5280 Raceway. And there were a couple uh, racers out there that had the new PN 3.0 chassis. And since we didn't get one to uh, review and show off, maybe we still will at some point, uh, but we hadn't gotten one yet. This was a great first look to show you what some of these guys are doing with the cars, the different classes they're running in. We actually had one in each of the main classes. We had a stock, that, a lipo stock, a super stock and a pan car a mod pan so it was really cool to see how these guys uh, built these cars and how they performed in the uh, in the races so uh, let's go ahead and check it out <laughs> Got the new PN 3.0 chassis here. And what's this one? Why don't you tell me about your car and your setup? What you got going on here? So I was running the 2.5 before. So I pretty much just transferred everything over. I'm running the single cell 38 380s. Uh, pretty much just transferred everything from my 2.5. Okay. And you're running it in stock, li lipo stock. Uh, Colorado stock. Yeah, yeah lipo yeah. stock. Awesome. And how are you liking it so far? Uh, I love it. It's definitely an improvement from the 2.5 chassis. Um, the only issues I've had is if the servo's at 100% endpoint, sometimes when you turn, it'll pop out of the the turn the turn buckle. The servo saver will pop uh, out on the top. On the bottom. Or on the bottom where yeah, the, the it over travels. Um, okay. So I reduced it down to 80 80 percent endpoints, and it's, it's not plenty been of turn. Fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Definitely turns better than the old the old uh, 2.5. And uh, how long did it take you to convert it over? Since you just did a straight swap. Uh, I just built it two days ago, just before the the Grand Prix. Okay. And it took me maybe two, three hours. Okay, not too bad. So. And that was just pulling all your uh, 2.5 stuff off and throwing it on here, huh? Pretty much, yeah. Awesome. And all the fitment was and good. And The big issue I had was just getting the ESC to calibrate properly and, and get that paired up. But, okay, all right. Um, the chassis itself is super quick, super easy. Um, the My only criticism was probably the hardware. All the screws are in one bag, and the and the instructions don't really call out for which length to go where. Oh, uh, so yeah, you're, you're so you kind of figuring out which screw goes yeah, where. Yeah, trial and error, and figure gotcha. it out. And, and you're running the reflex front, and then uh, yeah, for the reflex front, I did have to trim this corner here. Oh okay, um, yeah. You can kind of see it right there in the corner. Yeah. Uh, it's very boxed out, and it it hit the very edge of the bumper there, so gotcha. it kept you from bolting it up, but. Well, I just, you feel like it's running pretty good, huh? Yeah. You said it's super durable, huh? Uh, yeah. Very durable. I'd say it's very... It, it's... To get the full setup, I think it's a bit pricier than a reflux. Um, but if you've already got a 2.5... Yeah, if you got a 2.5, it's you definitely go lipo, a, a nice improvement. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely a nice improvement over the old chassis. And it's using more, uh, a little bit simpler setup than like a reflex or a GLR or something like that. So yep. for a newer, a newer person... This is definitely going to be an easy kick. And having a, a micro servo is definitely nicer on this setup versus the other style. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Right on. Awesome. Well, good luck this weekend. Yeah, thank you. What do we got with this chassis going on? Well, we got a 3.0, the new PN chassis. Uh, I know. It looks a little different. Well, it's usually made for the saddle packs, but I decided to build it like a 12 scale. Um, I usually have my batteries on one side, the ESC and the receiver on one side. So I counterweight it with a three gram uh, weight. Um, that way it would balance out uh, the, the white springs on the back to make it a little stiffer, make it a little solid. And, and what, cl what class are you running this in? Just I'm so running, people know. running mod. Mod, regular mod. drive mod, okay. pan car, yeah. Oh, pan car. Yes. Nice, okay. Um, it's doing pretty good. At first, I could it was it was flipping. Um, we just had to figure out the combination with the springs and the tires that needed to be used. Uh, right now, I'm using KS uh, M mediums in the front and the PN the PN what is it the the mediums KS mediums in the rear. In the back, yep, the trinets. And I'm using the 14 inch rims. Uh, it makes the car a little more stable. Um, so it's it feels a lot more planted. A lot of guys are putting weight on it. I am not. 
I'm trying to keep the car light. So what's your total weight? The, the weight of the car right now is actually 140 grams. Wow, that's that's crazy. It's real light. So it's just nimble as hell through the infield. Yes, how, how do you do with the uh, on the on the straight and towards the with the braking and whatnot? Does it seem like actually, it's still holding it's, on pretty it's, well? It's doing good. Nice. I, I could actually full throttle all the way to the end of the uh, straightaway, and once I get it into the corner, hit the brakes, let it go, hit the gas again, and I'm gone. Um, like I said yesterday, I was having some issues with it, but actually, I put we put the disc back on it. Oh, you were running no disc before? Yeah. Gotcha. And it's actually it made it a lot more stable, a lot more quicker. What uh, what weight dampening are you putting on there? Um, I'm using 400 a Kyosho. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Um, and it seems to be working right. Have now. you had any issues? Somebody else mentioned issues with the steering at full. If you go 100% popping out the bottom, have you had any issues with like I that? I have not. No. Uh, we just gotta make sure you set your endpoints. Yeah, so I've been looking at that, but I actually have my endpoints at 100 on both oh, and, sides. Oh, it still doesn't do it. Okay, it good. It doesn't do it. Um, right now, I did bring it down because the car is literally so much steering. Right. So you just don't I'm need at, it that far. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually at like 65. Uh, in points on each side um my dual rate on the steering is probably like 75 okay but it's it's a car that has a lot of steering awesome so uh anything of note anything of note for even maybe for like a newer person because i know a lot of newer people are first time into lipo are gonna maybe take their pn 2.5s and convert them to lipo yeah uh especially with this new stock class that we're having i think that that's going to happen a lot um what i i mean on a on a slower level on a slower level i think that the car will uh, function real good um at i'm using it for mod so right you're I pushing can, its limits exactly. for sure so if i could push it this far for super stock and in a stock class it's going to be 100 percent. yeah yeah makes sense makes sense awesome well i appreciate you let me look at your car and good luck this weekend thank you it is awesome got a couple other setups here this one's set up for super stock yeah and then what's this one set up for uh, another mod, mod. mod. Another yeah. pan or just regular mod pan, uh, pan and mod okay running them both got it awesome guys cool cars for sure all right we're with the jai and his 2.5 conversion to 3.0 pn car why don't you tell me about your car there buddy well um basically i have had a few of the 2.5s okay. and you know i've kind of converted over more to the pan cars and have been waiting, have been bugging Grant to find out when the 3.0 has been coming out, going to come out. Uh, because I have a lot of, you know, awesome PN parts, uh, and I wanted to uh, to see what they had in store. So far, so good. I really like the build. Um, it was pretty easy. Uh, it is a little tight for the electronics, but I managed to get it to work. I ended up putting my um, uh, receiver sideways, so I could so I could mount my. Uh, as you can see right there, yeah. so I could mount my um, transponder up here. Makes I know a lot sense. of guys are matter, m mounting their uh, receivers here with the transponders on top of the receiver. So this is kind of keeping it a little lower. And this is for super stock? Super stock, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I haven't had a chance to really tweak it yet. I did get it out on the track. It's not fully weighted yet. I think it probably needs about uh, 20 ounces or so, and it should be pretty good. 20 grams. 20 grams, yeah, yes, yeah. excuse me. That's did, you see, did you see Pedro's setup? I did. His was really cool. He had the one battery on the side and electronics on the other side. Yeah, he's at 140 grams. Really? Yeah, well, he's running in mod, so you oh, can yeah, run so it under. You can be underweight, but yeah. like, he's, he's running a super lightweight setup, so. Yeah, yeah, so I still got to work on the, the, the springs for the uh, side shocks and and what I want to do there, but yeah, it's pretty slinky. I did go with a um, RTA top disc, which I find that they're smooth right out of the box without really having to do any kind of, uh, you know, polishing or anything. What, like what uh, weight dampener are you running on there, fluid? Or um, right now I'm not, but typically I would probably do like 5,000 Kyosho okay. grease. And then uh, any for notes for the new guys out there that are gonna maybe be converting over or building one of these from scratch to get into LiPo for their first time? Just about the build in general, anything that you... You know, no, it was really, it was really easy. It really wasn't that difficult of a build, um, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think pretty straightforward. 
I would say that, you know, the one thing in the build, it, it you almost think that they're going to give you a servo horn, but they don't. So you have to buy the servo horn. Okay. okay so the, I don't. And that's going to depend on which servo you run, right? Right. Like 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 if you buy like the you know the uh, AO6. Uh, CLS, I think, is what it's called. Okay, yeah. They come with servo horns, so yep. you can use one of the ones that come in there. And typically, it's going to be the whole, um, the, the the whole, the second hole closest to the bottom that you would that you would, um, you know, want to enlarge to accept an M2 screw. Gotcha. And once okay, you do that, you this just, part is an M2, right? And you just run a nut through there, and then you're good. Um, oh, I see how you do yep. it. Okay. The other, the other thing I will say is that, I, and I learned from one of the other guys that built it, is that once you do set it up, and you're you're going to want to back your EPA down a little bit because if you're running full EPA, it'll pop. It, the, it pops the, out of yes, the, uh, the, the steering the link. Tie rod. Yep. Tie rod. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That was something. So Pedro said he didn't have any of those issues, but. Uh, the other car did. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. I think it just depends on your servo. Yeah. So you, you get your EPA down, and it's there's tons of EPA with this car. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you have, if you're in full EPA, you're doing you're, you're doing probably doing a six. six <laughs> right. Circle. Right. Right. So well, tons. most of the time you don't run full EPA no. anyway. So you've got tons of especially on these car. servo cars. Yeah. So. So I'm I'm excited. I just you know still need to do a little bit more work and and tune it and just see you know where I want to run it. All right. Well, it's a good looking car. And when you do decide to get it on the track for a real run, I wish you the best of luck. Awesome. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. All right, guys. So I hope that showed you a little bit about the new PN 3.0 conversion, whether you're uh, converting your 2.5 or building a new one from, from ground up. Uh, these guys are doing some really cool stuff with it. So from what I hear, it's a super easy chassis to build and you know, good for anybody that's new. And then clearly they're running them all the way up into mods. So. Even if uh, you're not new and you're a veteran, maybe this is the chassis for you. So make sure you guys check it out. So I hope everyone liked what they saw. They're pretty cool cars. They're really good for somebody who's already got a 2.5 chassis and want to convert to LiPo, or if you're building your first LiPo 128 scale on-road car. Um, I think this is a great chassis to start with. And uh, PN's been around for a long time. You know, they're kind of the staple in the Mini Z 128 on-road uh, circuit. You know, they host a lot of races. They're one of the bigger world championship races. You know, so they kind of set the standard on what classes are ran and what's uh, what the requirements and rules are for those classes. So this will definitely be a heavily used chassis. Uh, everybody's pushing real hard on the the lipo. It's just a better a better platform than the AAA. AAA is really approachable, so that's nice uh, because anybody can go and buy a AAA car. But when you start to try to build a higher performance car and you're trying to make a more even playing field uh, where you're not doing you know, battery shenanigans, because you can do a lot with AAA batteries to kind of cheat them out uh, by a whole bunch, you know, at one of the races I had heard around that uh, somebody had bought like $500 worth of AAA batteries just to pair and match the best batteries. And LiPo doesn't really have that. You can still do stuff with LiPo, but it's just, it's a little bit more difficult uh, to get an uh, upper hand and they're just better batteries in general because they keep an even uh, power output throughout the entire race whereas triple a's have this peak where they're really fast out the gate but then they just slowly drop off and your car gets slower and slower and slower over time and um so the lipo is just kind of a, a better way to go uh we'll still see a lot of box stock kyosho box stock to get people into this hobby but i think the jump to lipo should come a little sooner now uh that there's this chassis so it should make it a little bit easier for people trying to get into lipo and if we do end up getting a 3.0 chassis obviously we will do a build video and show you how we end up putting it together and maybe it'll help you build yours but we got to get one of them first so we just we just haven't gotten one yet we do have a 2.5 we need to convert maybe i don't know maybe we'll keep it triple a just uh just to show the differences to people but uh yeah make sure you subscribe so that when we do get one and we make a build video, you'll know. Hit the bell so that uh, you're notified. Anyway, make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell. Um, show people this video if they're interested in the chassis. That's one of the best ways to help my channel if you like what you see. And why don't you go ahead and comment down below. If you're still watching at the end of this video, go ahead and comment down below PN 3.0. All right, guys. Until next time, get out there, build something cool. Drive your cars, crash them, smash them, bash them, but don't break the expensive parts.